We need a couple things to get up and running. We need to install a couple things and download a couple things before we can start writing some CSS grid. First thing we need is to download Firefox. And uh, the reason why I'm using Firefox here is not just because they've sponsored this entire course, uh, which is great, thank you for doing that, but even if they didn't do that, I would totally be using Firefox because at the time, the CSS grid tools in Firefox are by far the best debugging tools out there. Chrome currently does have CSS grid debugging tools. However, they are not very good. They are very, uh, very simple. I'm sure they'll get much better with time, but currently Firefox is... Um, ways ahead. So we're going to be using Firefox for the entire uh, course. Now I'm using Firefox Developer Edition. You can use any version of Firefox Nightly or Stable, but I recommend getting Developer Edition just because they're always going to have the latest CSS grid features in Developer just so that we can uh, debug it and, and get a peer into it. So we'll be using that throughout the course. Download and install Node.js. You likely already have this installed. However, if you do not, you can just go ahead and download the current version. Click Next, 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 and that will install it on your machine. The way you can tell if you have it installed is you can just go to your, your terminal, and you can use any terminal in this course. I'm using one called Hyperterm. Um, but you can use the one that's built into Windows or the terminal in OS X, or if you're on Linux, you probably just boot into that. So you just type node, if you can spell node-v, and that's going to tell you which version you are currently on. I'm on 8.6. Maybe I wanted to update. I would just click this and download the next version. Third, we need to get the CSS grid starter file. So if you log into your course dashboard at courses.westboss.com, you're going to see a link to the starter files. That's going to kick you off. Obviously, I don't have a CSS grid course here yet. This is just an example for my JavaScript 30. But once the course is live, you'll see it in your dashboard. You can click off to the CSS grid. Right now, there's not a whole lot on my GitHub, but you should see a GitHub repo full of different folders and each video or each couple of videos is going to have a folder associated with that video. And we're, we're generally going to have things like it test dash start and test dash finished. And the finish is going to be uh, the state that the file is in at the end of the video. And then the start is going to be any any sort of starter HTML that you don't necessarily need to write. That's just sometimes it's just a bit of a waste of time. So you'll see that. Go ahead and um, download the entire thing. You can also fork it to your own. However, please be careful with forking it because what happens, let me show you here on my JavaScript 30, is people will, a couple of thousand people have forked it. And then when they try to push the changes up to their own repo, they accidentally uh, make a pull request to my own, which is, the, it's an accident, but uh, I get a lot of email. So make sure you're not accidentally pull requesting me and you'll be good to go. So that's all that we have there. Once you've downloaded all of the files, what I want you to do is to open them up in your finder and it'll look a little bit something like this, just with much more folders. And you'll see that we have a package lock a package JSON, um, and you won't actually see the node modules folder. Let me delete that right there. The package.json, you can open that up in your editor here. There's really not a whole lot here. The only reason I asked you to install Node.js is because we're going to be using a utility called Browser Sync. And what Browser Sync does is it's going to watch all of our CSS, HTML, and JavaScript files and automatically reload them in the browser so that we can sort of stay in our code here while just looking at the refreshed results on our left without having to go over and manually refresh it. You are totally fine to just open these files up in HTML uh, in your browser without browser sync, you can just scrap this entire piece if you want. However, I think you're going to be much more productive if you use this browser sync tool that we have here. You'll see that I've created this script called start. And all that does is it, it runs this command called browser sync start. And we pass it a couple different arguments here, a couple different flags. We've got the server, which it creates a local host uh, URL on our computer that we can visit. Uh, it watches all of our files that end in CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, and we'll refresh when any of those change. It's a directory, and that will show us a listing of our directories, and then we're running on port 7777. Uh, and then by default, I'm going to open the browser called Firefox Developer Edition, 
If you would like to change that to maybe just regular Firefox, you can just type Firefox. Or if you're using Chrome for some reason, you could do that as well. But I'm going to leave mine at Firefox Developer. Now, what I want you to do is to open up this CSS grid folder in your terminal. Now, if you're not totally sure about how that works, what you can do, this little, little trick that I like to do, is to find the CSS grid folder on your computer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go one level up. It's right here. Type, let's say I'm on my on the root of my computer, just type CD space and then drag and drop the CSS grid right into there. And then you know you're in it. You can type PWD to see where you are or ls-l. You can see that we are in the folder with the package.json. Then we can go ahead and type npm install or just npm i, and that's going to install our one dependency, the only thing that we need for this entire course, which is browser sync. And then we've got it up and running. Now what I can go ahead and do is type npm start, and that will open up a directory of all of our files and folders. You can go into O2, go to test-start, and you'll see sort of this base style that we got. Let's go ahead and actually open up that test dash start value that we have here. And this is just a very basic HTML that I'll likely start you off with in a lot of our videos. So what you can do there, if you just have a paragraph tag and type hello and give it a save, you see it automatically shows up on the right hand side here. Same thing if you have a style tag and maybe we have a paragraph and we want to change the font size to 20 PX, it's going to automatically change the font size or any of the things that we change is automatically going to change it on our left hand side, no manually refreshing. Uh, that is needed. Uh, this editor that I'm using is VS Code. You can use any editor that you want. However, I highly recommend that you use some editor that has Emmet in. And if you haven't looked at it, just go to emmet.io and uh, you can install it for virtually any editor out there. Um, with VS Code, it's automatically built in, so there's no package that you need to install. Um, why do we use that? Well, I like to do things where like, if we want a container, and then inside of that container, we want a like 10 items and we hit tab. That's going to give us 10. So I'm going to be giving you these little snippets to type and then to hit either enter or hit tab. And that will automatically complete the HTML that we're actually looking for. Same with inside of CSS. If I do something like font size 50, we I could just type FZ. 50 tab and that's going to complete it. Those things are not necessary, but it's going to make us much more productive. Um, so I, I recommend that you install that and also to show you how it works as we go along the way. Um, why does this look so dang good already? Well, I have a sort of a base CSS that I'm going to be giving you. Um, I'm going to run through it real quick just to give you a heads up of what is in this base CSS. Um, there's not a whole lot related to CSS grid, but it's more just CSS that makes it look good. And, and when we're trying to debug things, it will look a little nice. So let's open actually that up. It's in our assets folder in a style.css. Um, first up, we have a couple CSS variables. If you've never used these before, I really like to to use specific yellows and specific blacks because I don't know, have some pride in your in your demos here. Make them look decent. Don't use red, green, and blue, the base colors that we always use. Um, use some nice colors. The problem is I don't expect you to remember what this hex code is here. So what we can do is if you want the uh, thing to be like border bottom. 10 px solid and I just say yellow that's not the the actual yellow that I'm looking for so what we can do is you can say var dash dash yellow and then what that's going to do is it's going to pull in that yet that specific yellow that I had been using in this style.css value same with here if I said color black that's going to be pure black but if I were to var it dash dash black it's going to give us that little bit of a, a lighter black value that we have there. So uh, if you have a couple different colors that like, you like to use throughout all of the, the files that we're doing here, you can just stick them in the root here and they'll be available in, in all of our files that we have there. Uh, next up, box sizing border box. Um, that will just make sure that anytime we add padding or a border to an element, it does not increase the size so that when we're trying to divvy up uh, the width of a, a, a container, then we, we have it there. If you're unfamiliar with that, uh, maybe do a quick Google into how that works in the traditional way, how it was broken for a long time. Uh, we're using just a base font. I'm setting the color of everything to be black. And there's a little bit of a text shadow on most of the, 
the stuff. I don't know if you can really see that. Um, next up, this is the uh, inherit of the box sizing border box. That's where we've set it here. Apparently, that's a little bit better than setting everything to box sizing border box. And then I just have a little bit of a, a background here. It's kind of a nice little gradient with the topography. Makes it look nice. Nothing to do with that. Um, apply some margin to my things. And then finally, I am using CSS grid in each of our items. We'll talk more about what an item is in, in a bit, um, but I just like to center the content inside of the actual uh, item that we have. So that's it. That's the base CSS that we have there. Um, everything else we're going to be writing either in a separate CSS file, or most likely we're just going to be writing in a style tag directly in the HTML file that we're working with. If you have any other questions about my setup, I likely have answered it at westboss.com forward slash uses. And here I try to detail all of the different themes and fonts and everything that I use uh, in my editor. If something is not there, feel free to tweet me. I'm at westboss on Twitter um, and I'll try to answer those as many as I can. Other than that, let's get rolling. I'll see you in the next video.